Hello everyone, a quick disclaimer before we proceed. What you are about to see is not paid or promoted content. Prom is not a financial advice agency. I am not a financial advisor. Nothing you are about to see is financial advice. Thank you. Enjoy. Wait, wait, what's that energy spike? Something is coming through the gate. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. Today joining us is Dan Aikling. He is the co-founder and producer of executive producer of Rogue Star. So, Dan, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Super appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to talk with me today. It's a pleasure. Tell us everything about you, Dan, and everything about Rogue Star. Sure. Uh, how much time do we have here? Uh, so yeah, no, I'll give you the. Uh, we are good on time. The TLDR. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, I've so I've been in the games industry for about twenty years, give or take. Uh, came, came and landed here right out of right out of college. You can do some math in terms of how much of a an old man that makes me. But so uh, three years. No, I've been, <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, but uh, but no, uh, I've been in, in small indie startups, uh, little. Uh, independent companies as well as some larger corporations as well uh, don't like to throw names around to throw names around but like you know 2k games is probably one of the bigger ones i worked for and then my last nice. stint was at uh, riot games for for quite a while uh working mostly with like back-end teams and some infrastructure stuff over there so not the not the cool player facing stuff so to speak like champions and things like that but you know we we were the ones keeping the servers up and making sure everyone could log in and actually play the game and the real heroes you were yeah, uh, you can you can argue that the other stuff doesn't really work without us, right? But it's it's all good. So it takes takes a team. So, uh, but yeah, so I, I was I was there for about seven years or so. Um, honestly, got a little, little bit burned out as some of us in the game industry can. Certainly after a stint like that, um, you know, so I took a little bit of a of a break. Uh, started doing some just some various like consulting stuff, and this is all when COVID kind of happened as well. So that turned into some work from home stuff. Uh, you know, and then fast forward to kind of where we're at today um, and what's going on with Rogue Star. Uh, in terms of blockchain history, I got into blockchain stuff around 2017 in a, in a pretty big way, mostly on the Ethereum uh, tech stack. Uh, I was actually really interested even back then for game applications. And I uh, was doing some work with uh, the engine uh, as a, like, this is very early in, in the engine coin life cycle. But I, I built a prototype just to see like how how can this work. Uh, it was not consumer ready, so I basically kind of shelved that and said, "We'll get there. I have faith, um, but we're not here yet." And so, fast forward to late last year, October, November ish time time uh, zones, and uh, decided this we're pretty much on the doorstep here. So I was looking specifically at like Solana, and then also like some layer twos on. Uh, EVMs like Polygon and IMX, and I, I was like, "We're not quite here today, but give it six to twelve months, and I think we'll." So you were actually be in a spot then. where we can. Mm -hmm. Oh sure, yeah. No, I don't. I don't give up, kind of like a dog with a bone, kind of thing, as they used to say. Uh, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I see. A, one of the things I like doing is like seeing, you know, potential in tech. That's like I'm a very technical person when it comes to like, even though you know, as a team lead and stuff. I, have very strong technical roots and I like being able to understand at a foundational level, like what are the advantages or disadvantages to various tech approaches? What does that give us? You know, and that's one reason why I got super excited about the blockchain. It wasn't um, around all the DeFi and like kind of the, the stuff that was in the news, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, but it was more from kind of like a foundational angle around, you know, uh, like I could rattle it off, but like, you know, we have like trustless transactions, we have ver verifiable records. Uh, transparency, like stuff that has been uh, sorely missing in some digital economies that I think will like really revolutionize what we think of when we think of a game economy moving forward in the next like three to four years. All right, excellent. So far, so good. What about Rockstar? Uh, what is Rockstar all about and how did you come up with that idea? Sure. Uh, so Rogue Star is a bit of a marriage between a little designer black book of ideas that 
most people in the video games industry will will have one you know the cool cool things that we want to make at some point in time um, along with being I, th I think a really good showcase for what we can do uh, not just as a as our little group right but as an industry with video games on web3 and, and using blockchain tech and so it's a it's a basically a little bit of a throwback to some of the older school like space flight sims that I used to play. So like going way back to like Wing Commander, I'm Freelancer, sorry to interrupt Free Space. Here, Dan, but from one gamer to another, every time I see a game with spaceships, I'm just, I got to play this. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's that uh, nostalgic thing that uh, wakes up inside me. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's, I grew up you know, as a kid, that's I had my uh, I didn't have a whole lot of cool peripherals and stuff, but I had my my Thrustmaster joystick, my you know, and that was that was my bread and butter back then. I, I love that thing. Um, so I, I definitely definitely feel you. So, but we were basically taking a lot of inspirations, uh, you know, and, and hearkening back to to games of of old and that nature, uh, and then we're trying to marry that with. Uh, social gaming aspects were more popular, like MMOs, so like Final Fantasy 15, World of Warcraft, that kind of thing. Um, but taking that in a very PVE focused approach, like, so, you know, we're like a lot of us were really big fans of like doing instance content, raids, things like that. Um, you know, and so it's kind of like this weird, this weird marriage uh, that we're putting together here. Uh, but we're all really excited about it. Um, and I think we have some really cool ideas in terms of how we can help like motivate and elevate play across multiple player types with the, with the approach we're taking here. So it's not just about, uh, you know, player killers and stuff yeah. like that. A lot of, a lot of freemium games and things like that, they, they do focus uh, quite a bit on that aspect of things, which is fine. Um, you know, but we're really trying to push the envelope and we're able to do this because of some of the things we're doing with the blockchain in terms of being able to, ex you know, basically reward in some significant way other player types as well such as like explorers and collectors and things like that so i'm basically the the way i can sum it up really briefly is like this is a video game that i've wanted to play for like 20 years uh there's been a couple uh you know there's been some good space sim games that have come yeah. out that i've enjoyed uh but they all just don't they don't exactly scratch that itch they're good um and they do some things very well but it's just not it's not what we're building with rogue star right Excellent. Before I ask you what I want to ask you, uh, first of all, congratulations for building a game you actually want to play yourself. This is number one priority for a successful project. Uh, when the motivation is uh, fun and joy, then everything else will come along. Now, uh, you have a good background in gaming overall, and you wanted to build a game. Why not build a conventional space game and choose blockchain? How do you benefit from blockchain gaming and what do you contribute to that? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And the way I look at it is, could we have done something with Rogue Star as a conventional game? Sure. Like, I mean, there's, there's possibilities for us there. Um, I, as I mentioned before, I'd kind of burned out a little bit and I was actually really thinking about like my future career path in games. Did I want to stay here? Did I, like, am I making the right impact and the impact I want to see moving forward? You know, all that kind of fun stuff that happens to some of us as we get a little bit, a little bit older in our careers. And I was, I, I was, I was searching, I was doing some soul searching, right? And so I think a lot of us kind of maybe did during so the pandemic. And the thing that I saw that I did not appreciate, uh, I had a lot of friends that got into like freemium and gotcha games because we're stuck at home and it's like, where are we going to spend our entertainment dollars, right? Um, and so they were, you know, and some of them are having fun doing okay. Some of them have addictive personalities and they're like, oh man, I just dropped 800 bucks on this game today and I don't know how I feel about that. You know, I'm like, ooh, you know. <laughs> um, but it, it happened. That's part of that, you know, it's part of that economy, you know. Um, but the level of like, I, I just call it respect at the end of the day, right? Because you put a lot of money into these games like that, and you feel generally pretty good about it for maybe a month or two ish. Uh, but they're all around like power creep and scope and all that. And so it's like six months down the line, like fast forward to today, for sure. You know, a lot of those people, they aren't playing those games anymore. Their, their yeah. cool stuff isn't cool anymore. And they've, they've moved on. And, and that's, that's done. And, and 
you know, I think there's a, a fair mindset if you approach it in terms of like, this is just money I would be spending anyway on entertainment, fine, right? Um, but if I go back to how I grew up, right, and, and games that I played before computer games were the big deal, we played hobby games and trading card games like Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, that kind of stuff, yeah. and even like Warhammer 40k, we bought stuff to play the game and we own that stuff, right? And so if, yeah. if we wanted to trade it with friends, if we wanted to sell it to a, a game store to get into another game, you know, we could do those things. And I feel I'm, like that's I'm actually sorry really to something. interrupt again, Dan, but since you mentioned those, I yeah. those days were so cool and I'm still into those old habits. Right before our interview, I was unpacking Pokemon cards. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No, it's, so that's awesome, that's, right? That's how uh, big of an impact can a game have when it's good. Mm -hmm. It lasts forever. Yeah, it, it can, right? Um, and there's a lot of pieces that go into that for sure. Um, but that's really what kind of motivated me to come back. I said, you know what? Like we, as a player base, we really lost something along this whole transition into digital media and digital goods. And it might not have felt bad because of how that transition kind of happened. But in reality, when you zoom way out and you look at it, you're like, this isn't, this doesn't really feel right, right? Like we can do better. And I think that's where the blockchain really comes in. And that's where, you know, why Rogue Star now? Why on the blockchains? Because we want to be at the front of this because blockchain, like any good tech, I think can be used for good ways. It could be used for some questionable ways, right? Um, but we want to kind of lead that charge as a, a company and a product that people can trust on the blockchain and say like, no, we're here for the players. We are doing this fundamentally for you, for you all, yeah. right? It's not about us and it's not about proving some fancy tech thing. Um, and that's why player ownership is like, that's really our, the horn that we kind of blow the loudest because that is so fundamental to everything that we do. And a lot of the designs that we have in Rogue Star around our basic economic systems and loops and things are rooted in really being, you know, a showcase for player ownership and what that can mean in a digital format. Awesome, man. So I want just to uh, discuss something with you. I found the phrase that triggers uh, your colleagues the most because we had some discussions prior to this podcast uh, so the, the the expression is play to earn. Can you explain why everyone despises this phrase in Rockstar? Um, I'm probably somewhat to blame for that because one of the things I was saying in like October of last year that play to play to earn as a as a concept for gamers is just broken. Yeah, it just doesn't work. It doesn't resonate at all. You know, the number of players and friends. If I go to them and I say, hey how many games did you get into because you could earn money playing them? Z zero, right? Yeah. Um, that's, that's not why we're here. There's other people that might be motivated by that, and that's great. Um, but the other problem is that historically in the market, when you look at how these games are usually released, the economies that they have built into them along like, you know, some pretty complicated DeFi tokenomics and stuff like that, um, they don't kind of, pass what I would call a, a yes. sanity test or like a litmus test, right? Um, and the, the biggest thing for me is that if you are trying to build a product and you're like, we are play to earn and we're happy to be play to earn, it's like, okay, so you set two things, basically. You're setting context that this, this experience that you're providing is for me to earn money first. And I'm playing to earn, that comes first and foremost. But then two, that market, that target segment, if you're talking about earning, that's what they chase, right? They yeah. don't care about your IP. They don't care about your gameplay, right? They care about ROI. And that is not a playground that I would ever want to play in. And that's why we were very, very particular around like saying, this is not a play to earn game. Um, we don't want that to even get near like what we're yeah. doing because it, it sets a completely wrong framework uh, for I what we're trying to build. That. I respect that. It makes sense. But for example, as we discussed, we grew up with... Uh, uh, play to have fun. This was what it was, you know, uh, trending for many, many years. You say you're against play or you, you do not associate Rockstar with play to earn. And honestly, I don't like play to earn because it's simply, it's not sustainable. All the projects we had till now, they are not sustainable. So 
uh, where does Rockstar belong? And how do you differentiate yourselves from play to earn? You are play to what? Because we live in an era that people expect something after the two. Play to what? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so there's a lot of different things getting thrown out there. I, I still don't think any of them are really that much better than, than play to own. I think that that really does encapsulate kind of what what we're trying to do and that's also like again since ownership is so rooted into a lot of our fundamental design philosophies right i think it's as good as any for us to kind of put a, a stake in the ground there and say this is what's important um what that means and the reason that's important to us uh, certainly within the team when we talk about things it's like you need like the the value that you put on owning something can be from anywhere it doesn't need to be from a dex or you know something like that it can be sentimental it can be social and that's fine uh -huh. but that's that's what's important is that, that ownership that acquisition of that thing and the, the nice thing about blockchain right is that one it's it's actually yours it's not just something that you're kind of that you own in a transitory relationship with another company right and it's not really yours um and you can do what you want to with it so you know socially you know, you can express it in various formats. If we want to get in the whole, the whole metaverse thing and stuff like that, maybe you can show it off that way. If you want to trade it or, or give it to a friend for whatever reason, that's you can do that too. If there is some market value to somebody else and you want to sell it as a collectible, go for it, right? That's that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, but that is that is what's you know needs to be driving that that player behavior is like you have to feel like what you're getting is cool. And that, like, why is it cool isn't just because it has a big price tag on it. Um, and that's not to say that some of those economies aren't, like, having monetary value is, is bad or whatever, like, that happens across a lot of collectible trades. But again, this is this, the, like, a just a very black and white contrast for me it's in terms of, like, these freemium games where I might spend a bunch of money and I get something that is very rare and worthless to me, right? It's like, I can't use that in whatever comp I'm building, right? and it's just dead and it feels terrible. And so you're like, well, do I try to work it in? Cause I can't do anything else with it. Yeah. You know, and on a free system, I can get something that's super rare. And like, even if I can't use it, it still has, I'm still excited because that has some value. I'm like, cool, let me find someone else that wants this. I can trade for what I'm after maybe, or maybe that's worth on the open market even more than what I want. So I can just, you know, find find someone to, to take it off me there, get what I want. And I'm I'm actually a little bit up on the transaction. That's that's all cool. But again, what what drives that? Is it the fact that I might have made a few dollars on that transaction? No, it's about being able to acquire what I was af actually after to play and participate in the game. Right. And it has to be rooted in that in that object, not just in a, a dollar sign. And that's like the main difference yeah. for me is like when we talk about earning, earning is currency of some kind right and ownership is, is way beyond that absolutely i agree 100 uh so often i catch myself looking back to all the you know games i have spent money on and they are just gone my skins my collections everything and you know i had fun for a time but now looking back i could have just simply i don't know just bought bitcoin 10 years ago and it would be mat and it would matter more but yeah i get your point and we're on the same page here what i also wanted to discuss is um where are you uh right now in in terms of development is the game ready uh or where, where do you guys are yeah i mean i wish it was ready um as <laughs> i think all developers do um but um, this isn't this isn't a project that we had started before and we just kind of came along and decided to put like the blockchain in it. It really was built from the, the ground up um, with with blockchain and Web3 stuff in mind. And so we didn't start building till about uh, like late January of this year. Uh, we released a couple demos that are just small vertical slices of one part of the Rogue Star experience. They're not trying to encapsulate the full game or or anything like that. Um, and we will continue to uh, produce and release those. Uh, we're working really hard on our first multiplayer vertical slice. Uh, that's a PVE experience. So it's going to be the first time we're able to group up with friends and, and go awesome. through a cooperative mission and, and take on some, some pretty cool stuff, uh, including a raid boss. I won't spoil a lot more than that, but um, we, wanna, we want there to be a very epic fight there for, for you all to have to cooperate and work together to, to actually achieve 
Uh, so that's, anyways, that's what we're working on now. Uh, st- like day and night on awesome. that one. Like I was uh, putting in some hours over the weekend. Um, oh, so, sorry, go ahead. No, it's all right. Uh, mainly I'm asking because uh, we are going to have a big segment on this channel, which is going to be live streaming in game, uh, in depth game analysis. So uh, mm-hmm. I would really like to test out the game once it's ready. I mean, uh, I would be glad to have you guys back on the show and uh, uh, you maybe you can tell me in more detail the gameplay, you can help me out. I mean, I'm a gamer myself, but uh, there are so many people out there who are looking forward to finding a way to join blockchain gaming, but the crypto aspect of it, it's <laughs> what keeps them away. Mm-hmm. So if yeah, we can so make I'm, it more approachable to our audience, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, no, I'd love to have you play it. Um, so I think one thing that we're doing with this release cycle, it's a it's a little bit of a, a new thing even for me. Uh, and we're basically trying to put out these little experiences that are vertical slices that are polished enough to provide valuable feedback to us as developers and also enjoyable enough for, for you all as, as gamers and and players to, awesome. to see what we're doing here and have a good time. Um, and so like, you won't be able to like, we're not looking for feedback on everything because everything's not there yet, obviously, but we'll, we try to make it kind of obvious, like, yeah, this is kind of what we're looking for some, some feedback on here. These are the parts of the loop that we're really trying to exercise. Um, to talk to the the whole blockchain and, and gaming bit, that's been a pet peeve of mine, like again, ever since the beginning. Um, I've, thrown, I've said many, many times like this, it just has to be frictionless. like. If, if anyone can tell a difference between logging into a traditional game and a Web3 blockchain game, then you've already missed that mark. Yeah. Um, and that is something that, you know, I, I like to put my development where my mouth is when, when and where I can. And even though we are early, uh, we've built a lot of very foundational uh, tech that we're building Roguestar on top of now. And that's a big piece for us. And you'll be able to see that even in that PVE demo. So what does that translate to? That basically means give us what you want. Uh, you can yeah. give us a social login across any major social provider. You can give us email if that's your preference, or we're even letting people log in with crypto wallets. If, if that again is your cup of tea and that is all you have to do, like just the, your accounts all spun up in the background. We do whatever blockchain stuff we need to do. You just get in and play the game. Awesome, man. Awesome. I'm really looking forward to playing the game. Is there anything else you would like to share with us uh, about Rockstar? Uh, yeah, so I just uh, say if you haven't haven't seen us, uh, don't be too surprised. I guess uh, we've been building very very heavily. Uh, our strength is definitely in our our developers and and our technical aptitude at, at what we're doing here. Um, we aren't the to be honest, we aren't the best marketers um, and and advertisers around. Uh, and, and part of that's my fault because I just don't. If we've got you know, we are still bootstrapped, right? And so the money that we're spending is spending, like we're spending it on the product. Um, we, we are not trying to, to get this in front of a whole bunch of people that it's not really going to resonate with for right now, or they're not going to be providing us the feedback that's useful for us to continue and put into it's the It's understandable. The There's only so much you can do. It's totally understandable. I'm sure you will do fine. I, I wish you all the best uh, for the future. And uh, of course, guys, I will link everything about Rockstar down in the description, uh, social media, go check them out. And uh, Dan, before we go, please give us your thoughts uh, on blockchain gaming in the future. Let's say in one year time, what do you think will happen to blockchain gaming? I'm sure myself, it will come out stronger from, from this bear market. But can you give us your thoughts, please? Sure. So uh, blockchain gaming is is coming, like uh, whether we, we want it to or not. Uh, and I think maybe not in a year, but in two or three years, similar to like free to play games and free to play gaming back from 2010, it won't be how we talk about games, right? Because ultimately, it's just a technical back end that we're leveraging, just like AWS and Azure. And we don't talk about games in that way either. Uh, it'll just be more about, you know, hey, is this game fun? How's the economy? Um, you know, you are you enjoying this thing? And ultimately, like we as gamers don't need to care if it's on the blockchain or not. Um, Absolutely. And what the, and what that means for us, right? Um, I do think the big thing that's a difference from today though is like even in a year, 
you will start seeing a lot larger game companies and a lot larger IPs uh, building off of this tech stack than we do today. And so if you don't think that's coming, uh, dig around a little bit because it is. I agree 100%. It was a pleasure having you with us, Dan. And as I said, I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you very much for being with us. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.